One locally developed vehicle that was widely deployed in Angola was the famous Ratl. It's an infantry fighting vehicle. Um, it was developed by Arms Corps at the height of the sanctions in South Africa and was a very effective vehicle. It's got a six-cylinder, 14-litre Bussing diesel turbocharged engine, five-speed automatic gearbox, it's six-wheel drive. Um, you have six diff locks on the axles as well, so it takes quite a lot of effort to actually get this vehicle stuck, and its cross-country ability is fantastic. All the, the, the axles are independently sprung, so you know, speed over rough terrain and that kind of thing, it's, this is what this vehicle is particularly good at. In Angola, the South African troops were able to take on the Soviet um, tanks with this thin-skinned armoured vehicle because of its maneuverability. If you could get the first shots in, it was the, the, the fight was basically over. And very easy to drive. It's, like, it's just like driving a big car, basically. Power steering, power brakes, automatic gearbox. It's just a technique of learning how to cross rough terrain and you know, muddy ground and that kind of stuff. It's just techniques that you've got to learn, but to drive it, walk in the park. But the enemy could field some pretty formidable weaponry of its own. It's a T-72 Russian tank, manufactured in Poland. It was purchased by the SNDF in the early 70s for research and development purposes to see what is the threat outside and to see if our capabilities are still up to standard. This tank has been extensively modified in South Africa with improved sighting and fire control equipment. It's got a 125 mm smoothbore gun, which is a European choice, but it's very accurate. Up to 3,000 meters I fired myself. And then it's also got um, submachine guns on it and an anti-aircraft submachine gun as well. I think it it's, was quite an excellent tank. Um, what made it very good is the suspension. It's got one of the best suspensions that I've seen and that I've driven. I've driven a Tiger tank, I've driven in the M1 Abrams, um, I've driven our Elephants, and I've driven this one. And I, I, I personally, I prefer the suspension. It's very good, good suspension. It's very smooth. The Russians are, are kind in the sense that they, the name of the vehicle tells you the year that it went into service in the Russian army. So the T-54-55 entered service in the 1954-1955 season. The 54-55 difference is, is very small in that there's just one extra machine gun in the 54 that the 55 doesn't have. But now if you jump to the T-72, again it's 20 years new technology. It is a completely upgraded vehicle, it is a vehicle designed from scratch that is still one of the most popular main battle tanks today. Even though it was made in the 70s, it is Saddam Hussein's main battle tank of the Gulf War, the 72. You will still find them deployed all over Africa, both the 55s and the 72s are widely used within Africa. Angola has a whole lot of them. The DRC has these vehicles as well. They are hardy, they are mechanically reliable, they are easy to maintain, which is an absolute dream for Africa.